Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Don't go anywhere because today we are talking lube. How important it is, what happens if you don't use it, but how to fix it if you did forget to use bar oil and destroyed your saw and melted everything. But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment with in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload about two to three times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. For this demonstration, I will be using a Husqvarna. I don't have a model number for some reason. It is missing it from here and from the side cover. That always makes me a little suspicious when a customer brings one in like this, but hey. Um, I'm gonna guess that it's probably about a 340. It looks bigger than a 240, so. Now the customer brought it in saying that it was not oiling and it is pretty evident that it's not. You can tell by the cha chain itself, it's super dry. Also, there's a blue hue on the bottom of the bar where the metal has gotten so hot it has changed colors. I did run the saw and nothing was slinging off the tip of the bar either. So let's go ahead and remove the side cover and see what's going on under here. So the first thing I do is I check the um, bar oil tank. It is full. The next thing I do once I have the side cover off, I will run the saw and I will see if any oil is coming out of this little reservoir right here. I did that and nothing was coming out. You can see everything is real dry. So it's, it hasn't been running with oil for quite a long time. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get our clutch off and our sprocket and uh, see what's going on behind here. If you need to know how to do that, I will leave a link right up here for you to uh, learn how to take your sprocket and clutch off. Well, that's loose. The sprocket's been worn, but not in too bad a shape. But this, this does not look good. What is that? That has been seriously melted. Let's look at the bearing here. It looks like it's missing some rollers all the way around. It's been hot. So I'm gonna take this next screw out so we can remove this side plate. All right, we've got our screw out so we can take this side plate off. And under here, you can see your oil line. This is your oiler. And this actual part right here that's still on the crankshaft, it's got some plastic chunks here. It was actually part of this at one time, so we're going to take all this out. And that's your whole oiler system right there. There is a hole, let me get some light on that. There's a hole right here this side goes in directly to your oil tank. So I'm gonna plug something up there so our oil doesn't come out. All right, so everything back here is pretty melted, wore out. Um, this is actually your worm gear that is connected to the crankshaft and it will spin and it will turn this oiler right here. Now these are completely stripped out and melted. Look at that side right there. It was just wearing on that really bad. So this was not turning to actually pump it to oil. So that's why it didn't have any oil. So it has to have a new oil pump. This is probably still in good shape. There's not much to this piece. It looks like there's a little nick right here, but not enough damage to actually make it not work. So I think that's gonna be fine. And the oil line actually still looks like it's in good shape too. So no holes, everything still looks good. So we're still gonna have this, but we do need to first get this existing piece of worm gear off of the shaft. Get 
So I'm just getting underneath here and I got to get this off. The shaft still seems like it's good, but it's just going to pop off here. So, yep, there it went. Okay. So we got that off. Shaft still looks good. And let's get some new parts. All right. So first let's show you the worm gear. This is what it's actually supposed to look like. All one piece. This is what the old one melted into. Um, the part number for this is a 544-212-402. The needle bearing that's going to go inside of your sprocket, that's a part number 503-539201. And the oiler is a 54005790. Before we go any further though, I do want to tell you guys, do not use used motor oil in your chainsaw as bar oil. It has metal flake in it. It does not have the viscosity to actually stick to your bar and lubricate correctly. Uh, actual bar oil keeps the temperature of your chainsaw down and it will actually burn your saw up by getting too hot if you have used motor oil in there. So make sure you don't do that. Now the old saws, they were more hardy. They were made out of metal. These ones, they try to make them lighter. They're mostly plastic. You will destroy your saw with used motor oil. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put our oil pump back into our oil line and it does have to go in a certain direction. Now remember, this is the hole that's gonna go into the tank to the oil tank reservoir. So it's gonna be facing this way when it's back on the saw into the saw. But we're gonna point it towards us right now because um, we need to put our oil pump back in and we have to line this hole up with this hole that goes to the oil tank. There's a hole on each side, but one of those will go to the line itself and then one of them goes to the oil tank. So we're going to slide this in here because this is stationary once we get it in here. And we are going to line it up to where there is a hole and I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but yeah, you can see the hole down in there. You wanna line that up perfectly to where you'll know that the other side is going to the line and this side is going to the tank. Then we'll grab our oiler gear and slide it in. And you can actually hear it pumping. Hear it pumping? Yeah, so it's working. So we're gonna take our little plug out that I put in there to make the bar oil not come out the side and we're just going to slide all this back into its spot. Just like that. Everything's in there. Okay. Okay, so the next step is actually putting the side plate back on. But before I do that, I do want to show you how this worm gear actually works. This coil that goes around it right here, once we slide this on, it's going to rub against this gear on the oiler and it will spin while the saw is revving at thousands of RPMs. And we can check that it's working by turning it like this and we can see that it is spinning the oiler around. So when it's going at thousands of RPMs, this little thing's spinning really fast. So next we're going to put our side cover back on. I'm going to go ahead and replace the screw in it. All right, before we put our worm gear back in, I'm just going to go ahead and add some grease to it all around here because it is going to be rubbing really fast here. We're going to just spin that in there. And then I'm going to take my new needle bearing and I'm going to put some grease on it. We're going to put it right there. Now, when you put your sprocket back onto this saw, um, it does have two grooves in it that go into your worm gear and that's what actually turns it. So you have to make sure that those two grooves are lined up with the grooves on your worm gear. That's all spinning correctly. And then we're gonna put our clutch back on. It does go on with backwards threads. All right, so I'm gonna tighten this down and we're gonna see if it oils. All right, 
we got everything tightened down. Wear your safety glasses. And let's see, if, we're gonna see if the oil's coming out the side here. Also, last but not least, while I'm putting this back on, I just noticed this, the holes where the oil actually travels through from that little side reservoir right there were clogged up. So you need to make sure to check both sides and get that gunk out of those holes. So I'm gonna take something pokey, get all the gunk out of this, and make sure that there is nothing stuck in them holes that would prohibit the oil to go through, so. All right, we're good to go. Let's put it on and see how good it oils. So if you ever are in doubt on if your saw is oiling enough or not, all you got to do is point it towards the ground, rev it up a little bit, and if you see that stream of oil, you know you're good to go. So thanks again for tuning into Chicanic. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. Please leave a comment. I would love to read through the comments. And before I head out, I have to give a huge thanks to my buddy, White Knight Cat. He bought six t-shirts off Chicanic.com for presents for Christmas this year. That is amazing. Thank you so much. If you haven't checked out our apparel store yet at Chicanic.com, we have t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. So go check that out. We also are on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Chicanic and at Instagram at The Real Chicanic. Thanks. Have a great day.